I've talked a lot on this channel about all of the different things that Sweden has got going for it as a country, but something that we end up coming back to time after time is fika, the Swedish concept of coming together with your friends or family, sharing a coffee or another hot drink and eating a small treat. In fact, in one of my first videos right here on this channel about a year ago, I shared five of my favorite fikas with you guys and you came back with all of your other baked treats and suggestions in the comment section down below. But at the end of the day, people will tell you that it doesn't really matter what you're eating at fika time, it's the social intercourse which is most important. They'll have you believe that the food that you're eating at fika time is just incidental. It really doesn't matter at all, it could be anything. But what if I was to tell you that there is another side to this story? that in fact the Swedes are harboring their best kept secret. And if you've read the title of this video or been around on my channel for any long period of time, I think you'll know where this is going already. Yes, you guys, because today's video is dedicated to the absolutely ultimate Swedish fika treat the semla. So over the next few minutes we'll be digging into the history behind the semla and how it came to be in its current form today and all of the reasons as to why this is Sweden's ultimate fika treat. So listen up. The eagle-eyed viewer out there will know that there is no coincidence as to why I'm making this video at this point in the year and the reason of course for that is because Fetis Dagen is fast approaching. This year it will be falling on the 1st of March. And Fetis Dagen, or Fat Tuesday as it literally translates to in English, is something that is still marked and celebrated across the European continent. In fact, in the UK we call it Shrove Tuesday and it's a very important day in the lead up to the celebrations of Easter. Yes, that's right you guys, because according to Christian tradition, Traditions, there is a 40-day fasting period which leads up to the Easter celebration and the last day that you're allowed to eat and stuff your face silly before that fast begins is Shrove Tuesday or Fetis Dagen or Fat Tuesday or whatever you choose to call it. It's the last day that you can pack as many fatty goods, as many calories into your body before it's time to kiss goodbye to food almost entirely for the next 40 days. And as you might expect, different countries have developed their own unique and interesting ways to mark this occasion. And I have to say, as someone from the UK, I thought we were onto a bit of a winner here because in the UK, we mark Fat Tuesday or Shrove Tuesday with the tradition of Pancake Day. And the the reason for that of course is there's lots of rich ingredients which we can use up on that last day that we're allowed to eat whatever we like and we're often having our pancakes in a stack with syrups with jams nutella on top in more recent years it's an absolute winner of a day which i look forward to every single year problem is what i didn't know is just across the north sea the swedes are hoarding one of the best kept sweet treat goods in the entire world the semla so i think it's high time that we lift the lid pun intended, on this sweet treat and share it with the rest of the world. So if you don't have any idea what I'm talking about, it's time to get you caught up. Yes, if the Semler is an entirely new concept to you, you have been missing out and I am here to fill in those gaps for you and put you out of your misery. But all I can say is, you're lucky that we're talking about the Semler here in the 21st century and that you didn't come over to Sweden in the Middle Ages to experience it when it first arrived here. Because when it first came out, the Semler looked nothing like what it resembles today. No, in fact, if you have been browsing the streets of Gamla Stan in Stockholm in the early Middle Ages, I don't have any hesitation saying that you might have been a little bit underwhelmed when you first experienced the Semler, because it didn't look anything like the treat that we have today. In fact, it was just a wheat barn, no seasoning at all, very, very soft, very, very basic. But then along came the year 1541 when the Semler started to get that prime and center role that it's got today in the Fetisdagen tradition. After which we have seen so many different facelifts and dare I say taste lifts to the Semler experience. Yes, that's right, because ever since that day, the Semler has gone on to take on a life of its own and the form that we know and love today, with that cardamom spiced bun, the lovely layer of cream that people go crazy for, and indisputably, the best part of the Semler, the mandel massa, which is basically an almond paste that's wedged inside that lower part of the bun. If you picture the taste of amaretto, but as a sweet bun-based treat, you're not far off. And as a result of all of those enhancements, we ended up with this masterpiece. Honestly, what is there not to love about this cake? In fact, I'm prepared to go out on a limb and say perhaps the best time to visit Sweden might have been in about the 18th century when this tradition of fasting started to begin to fade here in Sweden. And after that point, instead of just having one of these semla on that last day that you're allowed to eat before the fasting period, people started to have a semla every single Tuesday for seven weeks leading up to Easter. What a time to be 
alive. But I think that the seasonal nature of this good and the fact that you only see it in the shops between December and February time means that a lot of tourists around the world aren't that familiar with this. They don't really think of Samla when they think of Swedish fika. Instead, they are addicted to their kanelbulla and their wienerbröd, for example. And rightly so. And whilst both of those treats are fantastic in their own right, it's time to wake up and smell the daisies. And today I'm going to be running you through some of the reasons why Semla is absolutely Sweden's best kept fika treat. The first of which has to be its look. It's compact, but it's soft and it's elegant and you've got that lid and then that swirl of cream, not to mention the way it all comes together. It's just the perfect fika. But I think that where the semla really starts to come into its own is when you look at those ingredients that go into making this tasty treat, because it really is the perfect combination of all sorts of different things, and there's something in there for everybody. You've got the cream, for example, for the kids. You've got the mandel masa, which as I've said already, is the best kept treat of the whole thing. And then if you prefer, you know, a traditional kind of bun-based Swedish good instead, you've got that savory bun that is lightly seasoned and sweetened with the cardamom. Did I mention the almond paste which just takes it over the edge? But before you embark on a quest to order 15 of these things to try at home on your own, make sure that you consider taking everything in moderation. Yes, because based on looks alone, you would think that you could sit there happy and eat semla all day long, but King Adolf Friedrich in 1771 learned the hard way that that might not be as easy as you first think. Reason being, in 1771, he decided to follow up a lobster and champagne based banquet with 14 of these buns, dying of indigestion only slightly later. So maybe the Swedes were onto something by just having these guys once every Tuesday in the lead up to Easter. But where the Semla really starts to come into its own is when you look at how diverse and flexible this baked good is. Yes, that's right, bakeries all the way up and down this country have taken on the tradition to try and switch up the Semla recipe and create new and exciting experimental versions. In a tradition that has given birth to the likes of the Nutella field version of the Semler, the Semler cake, a princess torta collaboration called the Princess Semler, and even the Semler wrap, where the dough is rolled out flat filled with the almond paste and whipped cream, and then wrapped back up like you're eating a burrito. And if I'm being honest, sometimes I think that the Swedes take this innovation a little bit too far. For example, when they created the Semla ice cream, the Semla porridge, and the Semla milkshake. But that said, it just goes to show quite how far you can take this dish and quite how many exciting blends and concoctions you can make on this fika. But I would also argue that it's this diversity of the semla which is its biggest strength. And if you won't take it from me, check out what Swedish food scientist Richard Tellström of Örebro Universitet had to say on this topic. He said the semla is a bun that's designed to be social, to be seen, and to be talked about. And it's these new variations which only go on to create more conversation and put the semla back at the centre of the debate. It's fika at its best. And to be honest with you guys, the stats don't lie, they tell their own story. Yes, that's right, because every single year here in Sweden, 40 million semla buns are sold and a further 30 million are made at home. Not to mention that studies have shown that about 50% of the population here are tucking into at least one of these semla on Fetisdagen every single year. And can that many people really be wrong? One debate that I'm not gonna be getting into today is exactly how you eat one of these semla. And I'm sure it's something that some of you guys at home are probably wondering now that you've seen one in the flesh. But there are several different ways that are said to be popular for eating the semla, and people compete on which one they think is the correct way to do it. In fact, if you're Swedish yourself, why not jump down into the comments once you're done here and let us know how do you guys eat a semla? What is the best way to do it in the region that you're from? But with that said, I've got a semla to be eating, so it's about time that I wrap up this video and get back out there to the mandel massa before it starts to warm up to room temperature. Hope you really enjoyed watching this one. Let me know down in the comments below if you've tried semla before, if you will be trying it now. Do you agree that it's the best fika here in Sweden or is there something else that you think is even better? You can let me know all that good stuff in the comments section down below and then subscribe if you haven't done so already. I put out videos every single week and then you'll be ready for the next one. Please drop me a like to let me know that you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next week for more content. But until then, enjoy your semla. Have an awesome Fetis Dagen next week and I'll see you guys soon. Bye bye.